so good evening and welcome to our first edition of what I am calling season three of Light Bites. Um, we're super excited to be back and uh, presenting a new season of Light Bites. We've got some excellent topics lined up for the year and we really can't wait to get going. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Uh, if this is your first Light Bites session, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, Light Bites is something we started uh, two years ago. We're now going into our third year, and it's basically once a month uh, we get together, um, we stream live, and we're starting to meet in person again as the world is getting back to normal. Uh, and we just talk about light and lighting and have a chat, and it's really super informal. Um, so please feel free to pop any questions that you have in the chat or put them up in the Q&A. Um, if you're new to our platform, uh, the little chat window is a little sort of speech bubble down in the bottom. If you're not seeing, uh, there's three little buttons in the bottom. So if you click on the ellipses, a little menu will pop up and uh, you'll see the option there for the Q&A uh, window. Um, so without um, any further ado, I'm super excited to kick off uh, season three, episode one. Um, with uh, another one of our uh, episodes in the series of sort of lighting designers from around the world. And I am so excited and I'm so happy that we're able to chat to Mandla and Charlie all the way from Johannesburg um, in South Africa. Mandla, hello, and thank you for joining us. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello to all the viewers of Light Bites. Uh, um, thank you very much for, for inviting me to the session. I'm very excited to, to chat light. Um, Yes, um, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Um, so just before we start, um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started? And um, I mean, so some of it, of course, will come out as we, as we talk through, but just a, just a sort of thousand, thousand foot view of, of, of who Mandela is. All right, uh, so um, when I finished school, I did not really know what, I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to do something that has that that had to do with art, that had to do with creativity, that also had to do with 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 some science, you know, some science where where you just get to figure out stuff. So um, I think one time I was in the theater and and I saw what they were doing, and I just asked to be part of this part of this setup. Thing and I just and then since then I just, I just never turned back because I just think I just like love this I I want to do this and and I met you of course uh, along the path I just got uh, you just got uh, you can go do this formally just go study this and, and yeah you know yeah but I I think I love the arts generally all forms of art. Um, I love life, and I'd like to think I'm a very kind human being. Yeah, I, I would second that course. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, but I mean, just there isn't much to myself. Just what you see is what you get. <laughs> cool. Well, I, I, I'll challenge that as as we go through. I, I think there's a whole lot to mind that uh, that we're going to reveal as we as we go through. Um. So tell me, it's been a while since I've been in South Africa. I've I've been out of the scene there for a while. Um, obviously, you know, the last couple of years has been a bit tough with with COVID and the pandemic and all the restrictions that that's had on everyone. What would you say is the state of the theatre scene in in South Africa at the moment? Uh. I'd like to think this is a very easy question, but I also think uh, very tough. One of the toughest questions you, you're asking me right now is uh, the theatre scene. I mean, the arts in general in South Africa right now. It's it's very tough. People are, are not find I find it not so easy for people to make a living out of the arts. Um, the government isn't helping much. Um, where you, where you, there's, there's too much politics to it, where, where there isn't much funding, um, infrastructure is just deteriorating. It, it's, it's not, it's not an easy space to navigate. 
it, yeah, it's it's a very tough space to navigate. Um, I found that in the past in the past two two three years, there's, there's just there's it's it's a, things a bit stagnant. It, there isn't much change. There isn't much there isn't much development that's going on. Um, and 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 just I'm just feeling for these for these kids who are studying the arts now. I'm like sure. Are you, are, you, are you ready to come into the world where, where it's, there isn't really much structure going on? Um, and I mean, the pandemic also, also sort of showed that there isn't much support for the arts in South Africa, really. Because I mean, mm. a, a lot of people were, were went working and a lot of people were starving. Some people lost lost their prized possessions in the sense of cars, property. It's, yeah, it's, it was just, it's devastating. But I mean, uh, I suppose the last, uh, the, towards the end of 2021, things were just started opening up and there were theater shows, lots of, you know, be able to see each other face to face. And yeah, but I, I think, I think, I think 2022 sort of promises a lot in that sense that, that things will open up, things will become easier. Um, so there'll be a lot of work for, for a lot of artists and a lot of, in the performance arts as well. There's theaters, theaters are opening. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of shows which are being advertised. It's great, I'm sort of excited, it promises like we we'll get back to we'll get back to normal if there is a thing called normal now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's it, it was one thing that always struck me being there is South Africa doesn't really have the Broadway or the West End. You know, there isn't a sort of big localized commercial pool of venues. Um, things tend to be a lot sort of more sort of spread out. Um, but the one thing that always struck me is everyone who works in theatre really cares. It's a passion. It's a calling. And the little theatres that pop up, and I'm thinking particularly of, of the market theatre, where I, you know, I spent a lot of time. I know you've spent time working at the market theatre. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a real little gem of a space. And and even though I think it's, it's been tough, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you know, it's, it's starting to come out of that now. Um, you know, there are these little gems of, of theatres sort of dotted around the country. And and I think as theatre makers, that's a really nice opportunity because you get to be in these little isolated bubbles just making your art and just, you know, creating magic. And I think that's that's something quite special that I actually haven't experienced anywhere else. Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually love that the, the sort of independent venue there's actually quite a quite a bit that popped up. Um, there was the pop art theatre in in Maboning at some point. There was the platform, and there's there's um there's a theatre in Tembisa. There's there's theatre. There's people are making theatres in 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 really like a, a sort of not your usual spaces, you know. And 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 yeah and. And that's and it, the passion behind it is, is so much. Is that they they get to do they get to do a lot of it's all, it's almost it's almost like um, before you even get to the to your market theaters and stuff. It, it's like almost like a community of of theater makers getting together and, and just making theater. Which you don't find that a lot anywhere else in the world. Really, it's just it's. Um, it is very intimate kind of spaces you go into, you know. And um, I think I've I've worked in such spaces as well. That's some bed, which it's it's so encouraging to to see people not not really relying on your on your sort of government funded institutions to to start making us. And, and and just being able to to go, what do you have? What skills do you have? 
how do you, how do we put this thing together and just and just coming together and, and making that sort of art and just helping each other out in a sense. And and the thing that you're saying about passion, it, there's a lot of it that that drives these spaces and um, makes me think of a guy in Cape Town, um, uh, Mandy, who, who's who's also it, it's a theatre and a shack really that can and and he teaches kids and yeah it, it puts up shows you know not for him to go to the art cave for him to put up a show it's just it put up a show right in the neighborhood and and the audience then becomes the, the community around the parents of the neighborhood and yeah it's 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 sort of cozy and 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 it, it makes for good development in terms of society in general. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'd, 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 I'd love to actually also explore a little bit more of that and go into the, those spaces. And yeah, I'm actually doing work. I haven't, I, I wouldn't say that I've done that enough. It, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that kind of leads me into one of the first sort of things that I was sort of wanted to chat about is in going, you know, going through your website and, and looking at the stuff and, and conversations we've had, being a lighting designer in South Africa and probably arguably anywhere in the world, but it's particularly apparent for me there is one day you'll be doing a show in a small venue somewhere, possibly a space that actually isn't a theatre or wasn't originally designed to be a theatre and you're having to make it work. And the next day you'll find yourself at the State Theatre in Pretoria or, you know, at, at the Artscape or, or, you know, one of these, you know, sort of big, you know, yeah. thing. how do you manage your process to deal with that, with that swing? Transitioning from, from, a, from a small space where, where... <sighs> man, it's not, it's not, it's not a very easy, I wouldn't say for me, it's not, it's not, it's not so easy as, as, as in, you know, cause I mean, working in a, in a space where not, not, doesn't have infra, uh, theater infrastructure as, as, as it were, um, and, and try, and try and, and make, it's, very, that's very challenging. And I think I love, I love being challenged like that. To just go, how do you, how do you, how do you make theatre in, in these spaces where where you don't have the infrastructure, you don't have the you don't have the lighting equipment, you 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 know you sort of you don't have the equipment. Then it sort of challenges you to to be creative, to to sort of light from places you've 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 literally <laughs> yeah, it's like a try trial and error kind of thing where and it's sort of and that sticks with you because you you you've learnt it somehow the hard way, and and you and you and 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 you keep these things to they become part of your arsenal as a lighting designer that you know you you you, you can sort of pull from from that bag of tricks where you keep collecting, and and working and those spaces gives you that rather than working in. In a in a theater where there's everything, it uh, yeah it just it allows you to play play a lot and do quite a bit, but it's creative it, creatively it's it's not very much challenging because you can sort of achieve whatever that you want to sort of sort of try and do, but transitioning from 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 a from a sort of a, a small sort of venue. To, to a big venue, which that that um, big venue needs a sort of lots more planning as well in in terms of um, your time and how and how you and how you want to sort of um, your the planning in, in in the sense of how you how you want to use your time in the in the space and the and the amount of uh, equipment that that's 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 available to you as well. It's uh, it's yeah. It's uh, that's that. I think that would be the difference 
for me, it would be that 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 would be the difference. It would be the amount of of, of, of equipment that's that's uh, at your disposal in your in a big venue and 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 having the and, and sort of having the lighting position already there, you know, compared to the small space where there is a lighting position, you make those things up as, as you as you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean it's it's it, it it keeps you alive. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I bet it does. <laughs> so yeah, that's, do, that's do you find so working working in 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 a smaller venue or or in in a, a sort of venue that's been turned into a theater for a for a specific occasion or in a specific location obviously one of the other advantages of working in a state theater or a market theater or anywhere like that is there are resident staff whose whose job it is to look after the show yeah. once you've left obviously in in a community space you might not have access to that same amount of things. So do you find yourself, I suppose the question's in two parts. Firstly, do you find yourself teaching a lot of people how to then maintain stuff and look after it when you're gone? And the second part of that question is, do you find that there's a hunger in in, in the next generation of people coming through to want to take this on as a career? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll start with the with the second half of the question. There's so much hunger. There is, there is. Um, I've recently met so so much, so much, um, so much young young stars. I mean, I'm also a young star, but I mean, so like who people who are starting off in the game, like and and they ask all of, so all sorts of questions, and some of them they. And some of them have have also asked me if, if would I like to mentor them. Right. And like of of course yes. I, I mean that's I would love to do that. And yeah, and there is there is so much. They they are there. They are ready. They are, I mean they they standing by on the way to to just to come in and 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 just and just carry on. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 it, it excites me that there is there is there is people who would want to take on lighting design or doing theater and 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 these tough times and like who oh, come come let let do the thing you know and and hence and, and as a result of I've, I've, I've started taking one taking one mental mentorship and just going. Come on, doing the show. Do you want to come see how we do this? You know, yeah. But then, and that's that's the other thing. And um, and your first half of the question sort of links to <laughs> to the to the to, yeah. Because I mean, it's it's taking taking people on and like I'll come, I'll mentor you. I'll teach you what I I'll give you what I know. You know, and and then I'll you, you can start off from there, and, and 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 then you can see yourself out, and maybe you can take on. Maybe somebody else can take on. You can take can take you on and 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 give you more mentorship. But yeah, I'm just giving basics and and that sense and just so and and just yeah. But that that's 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 part of it because I I mean I I mean I was also sort of carried along, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So talk us through your your process like how so you get the phone call hey i want you to do my new show it's whatever we'll call it a play for the sake of an example uh what yeah. what what's your sort of process how, how do you sort of get yourself to the point where you are you know in in the theater doing your thing sure well it, it varies it varies in, in different uh, from 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 one show to the other, and and um, so and and other processes is, is, is sort of from the text, you know, like oh you get a phone call, yeah, can we meet? I'd like I'd like for us to meet about, I know I want to do a show, I'm like, okay, cool, let's let's see how we do, and then that it was a, a drama, theater drama sort of vibe of get 
take it from the scripts and just go read the scripts and and see what what's what's in the what's in the text and for me to understand the text first and then see and and just pick off stuff from the text that that could make for good design because there's there's there's, there's the scripts that you read, which they don't, they don't give you much in, in the sense of, do you want to light that show? And, you know, so yeah, and, 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 and in, in that, you just go, okay, cool, we can do this. Um, and, and, and then, and try it. And then, of course, then there would be a team, a director, a lighting designer, your costume, all of those. You know, and you go, what, what's the, what, how do you want to present this? You know, do you want to go, I mean, do you want to go realistic? Do you want to go sort of symbolism, kind of that? Do you want to go abstract? Do, what, how, well, how do you want to do this? And, and then, yeah, um, and then, and then we'll take it from there and just, uh, and, and those, and the more, I suppose the more we communicate, and the more we talk about 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 the show before before it even goes to rehearsal, that's that's where you get most of what 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 needs to happen to it, you know. And um, yeah, and then and, and just being able to read between the lines in in a sense from the text. And but once once it gets into into rehearsal, suppose, and and you would you you then go to the rehearsal um, and I'd also I'd, I'd like making storyboards of, of yeah so that's that's part of, a, of of my process is just to go let's do this to see one the blocking and where the set how's the set looking like at this point and just and just draw storyboards and storyboards then would come with how do we like this? Do we like from from the side? What would you know? And 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 there's notes on the side as well that that, uh, that would also go with the color. What what sort of color do you want to use? All of those things. And um, we'll probably have three storyboards for the same show before it actually goes into <laughs> into actually. And before you actually action the design, mm. and and yeah, and I'd, I'd also use camera as well in the rehearsal room just to take a video and just to record the whole entire run and just and just sit when I'm at home and just sit by myself and just watch the the video and just, and yeah and just keep working because I think it that 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 process. Then eliminates a lot of things when you when you when you go into design. You know exactly what you what you, what you want to use, when, how. You know it's yeah it it gives you some form of you become a, a little bit sure about what you're doing when you go into into when you when you start lighting the show and 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 drawing up the lighting plan. So, do you get to do? Or, or do not to get to. Do you do much pre-programming before you get into the theatre, or do you wait for the lighting session and then sort of start plotting? What's how do you sort of deal with that? Uh, it depends on the scale of the production. Uh, yeah. So then, if it's not not too big enough for me to to go, if it's not not big as in the sense of uh, is it a, a, the magnitude of the show or the the, the, the the rig, how big the rig is, then it would be a thing that um, if it's if it's not that big that I could, then I would I would start off with the at the lighting session, but if it's if it's quite quite a, a, a sort of a monster to deal with, then I'd start pre pre programming uh, before before I go into a lighting session. But yeah, I mean that's, that's yeah, carry on. No, I was gonna say it's it's the one thing that I miss about doing theater there is 
is the concept of a lighting session, right? You, you get to go in and no cast, no nothing, just you, sometimes the director, sometimes not, maybe yeah. the stage manager, maybe not, but it's just you and it's your time and mm -hmm. you're in the dark and you can just play and you can just do things and pre-program stuff. Okay. We that's, don't, we don't get that. that here. That that just does not that's happen. It <laughs> doesn't, just doesn't happen. That's a generalization. It's very yeah. rare that we get that session here, and I yeah, miss it man. so much. Ah, those, those are the most beautiful. That's, that's where you discover a lot. That's where you find a lot, because you get to play around, make mistakes, and beautiful mistakes as well, as you, and then and you just sort of incorporate into the show. But I think um, uh, that's 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 the most that's what i that's that's the thing that makes me want to do theater is being able to just go sit in a dark room by yourself and just go let's try and play this thing out you know and then i would i would sit with the with the video and 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 just go from from the beginning let's start what you know and yeah, and and just sit there and just be able, and just and 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 yeah, and just and just play and and discover things. Because I mean, it what what you'd have then what I would have drawn on my on my on my storyboard would quite change quite a bit compared to what you know. And yeah, that's the most fascinating bit about it because there's no one there. It's just you. You, mm -hmm. and, and and whoever that you're sitting with could be the stage manager. Uh, well, I wouldn't like to sit with the director, but I, I sort of avoid sitting with directors in those sessions because they, they just, <laughs> you know, they sort of, sometimes they're sort of restricting. Like, oh, okay, Do you know cool. what, yeah, then, yeah. No, I understand exactly. Do you know what it is for me is, is it's not, it's not that we don't want the directors in the room but that's kind of our chance to play, right? So they, so it's yeah. the, the directors, and I'm sure there's directors out there who are going to kill me for this. But <laughs> directors' yeah, chance to play is in the rehearsal room, right? They they get they get the weeks with the company, and that and that's their time to play. And they go, oh, yeah. try coming in from there. No, I don't like that. Try coming in from there, yeah. or you know how whatever they do, that's their time to play. And then. We need our time to play. And our time to play is, gee, I wonder what that blue looks like at 50%. Oh, no, that's horrible. Yeah. Maybe I'll try the red from the other side. And that, that's and that's where having the director in the room kind of, I think, interferes with that process a little bit because we want to play. They want to light the show. Yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely. I absolutely agree with you because I mean, they, they sort of, they're not even so they, they let patience into our process and how we <laughs> they just want to see this whole entire thing done and I'm like no but I mean there's a whole lot to explore I mean what if what if I don't use the blue what if I use a red here yeah, instead of a blue what if I maybe not use that unit anymore and just try lighting from the other side and just see what you know because it's ah I, it, it's it is invaluable that's it's in invaluable time that's, that's just being able to do that uh i suppose that's that's why i'm i love theater because it, it allows you to do that and it, mm. and it and and it allows you to all sort of find accuracy that's that's pretty much what what for me what 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 theater has been able to sort of sort of instill is the sense of accuracy in 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 in, in that sense that you, you can't miss your mark you know all of those things and yeah and just yeah but i mean it's it's beautiful to to have a life in and just just to play and just you know and when they come in the next day and you go this is what i have let's you know and it's also also a bit of a surprise for them as well that oh okay cool this you know and 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 then for them to sort of to feel what what because I, I wouldn't then then being a lighting designer has has to count for something not just sit there and just go 
they are the, the, then just give the director what they want to see, but it's also it's also giving your own input into the work and just giving it your own direction in that sense. Cool. So, what's your favorite thing to light? Um, I mean, when 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 and I, and I ask because when when we met, you were working at the Dance Factory. We 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 met yeah. um, at the Dance Factory, which for anyone who doesn't know is a really cool space um, in, in the heart of Johannesburg. Yeah. It's really great, and it's um, it was designed to be a dance venue. I mean that that's what it does, and it does it really really well. Um, and, and that was that was where we met. Um, yeah, and I think it's fair to say that that you probably cut your teeth working on on dance. Yeah, um, dance. Do, do you still do much dance? Have you found something else that that you enjoy more? Um, or you know, like what? <laughs> if, you, if you could pick something, like what's what would be your what would be your dream dream show? Uh, oh, um, I, I. I suppose that maybe maybe this thing goes with phase with phases and in, in, in your where you are in life I suppose and what you know in 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 terms of your your progress in in your career as well but um I I love lighting dance it's it's to me it's just a, sort of like a, a freestyle kind of you do just a free flow kind of thing you could do whatever that you want to do with it you know it, it just gives you that but i also find i find lighting music uh, very fascinating uh i just yeah there's a thing about about music that just that just gives this you know it just gives me goosebumps it's just like uh, maybe i've been doing that more, most recently but I mean it's it's been the thing I also love music in that sense so uh, lighting music for me is just there's it's there's there's a, there's a way people do it there's a way other lighting designers do it but I have an approach to it that that sort of sort of imagine theater or all of the things that I know into lighting just a music concert where it's you know yeah but i love i love i don't that's a very tough thing it was, i can't i can't <laughs> can't make me choose which genre i i, I really was like the most but i mean uh well i i i love doing all of them oh, oh, oh. so it's what, drama dance music musicals as well is, is a thing that i also sort of love doing but um if i were to choose you say um which one would you want to do out of all of them for for my entire life i would choose music okay i would i would choose music but i mean i can sort of do all of that too. It, yeah, but the music sort of has a, has a special case somewhere. Cool. Um, I mean, we've we've largely been talking lighting, but you don't just design lighting. You 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 do a fair amount of set design as well. Um, yeah. And 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 you 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 kind of do them both together, right? So you'll do a set and a lighting yeah. design for for and a production. Yeah. Um. So tell me tell me about that. How 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 did that sort of start? for you oh well, uh well it was a, it was um so there's a there's a guy in Pretoria Bong and he just, he just comes like yeah, I'm doing a show but I don't have much of a budget would you please this is way back in in 20, 2014 I'm not sure 2014 2015 yeah. like yeah no it's yeah I've, I've, but I'm like, okay, cool, it's fine. We can try and do I can try and do, do both for you and just see how. But yeah, but it and then and and then time comes and I'm like, okay, cool, we'll do this for the set, blah blah blah, this for the lighting and all and it all sort of works out. And then I thought and I'm thinking to myself, but I've I've been sort of wanting to play in that space. 
of of actually creating this world, not not just not just come in and just light, you know, and just sort of. So where where it actually properly started was uh, while we were still studying in Pretoria, I would I would take on scripts and read them and just go. Uh, what 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 set would I probably do for this? And then I'd start sketching the thing. I still, I still probably still have some of the sketches. Where yeah, I just take a script and read it, and just go, what set would I do for this? Because I, I, I sort of, I sort of had a thing that I, I can do lighting. You know, I, I in the process of learning how to do lighting, but I mean, there has to be another skill that comes with it whether yeah and 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 i was also good in in deco painting classes i was also quite good and i'm like but why why not why not go do painting and just and and paint and light would you that would be great and then and i thought ah, but i mean the sound is light that's all sort of sort of goes together but yeah, event, eventually I just, go, I just, yeah, I just start reading these scripts and, and, and make up this world, you know? I don't know if it was bottom, but I, maybe, maybe I sort of knew that I was, I'm sort of going in that route and yeah, and, and just come up with, and just come up with drawings and this is how I would like this. This is a, it's just play, play, you know, just, just playing around and just seeing what, you know, yeah. But I mean, that's 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 how it started. And and yeah, when 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 I got approached to sort of hey, try and can you try and do this? I'm like, sure, why not? It's a it's an opportunity. I mean, there's no really failing in this. There's only just there's only just painful lessons. But <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I mean, that's gonna be my I, new motto: no failing, just painful yeah. lessons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I just took it on. <laughs> yeah, I just took it on, and yeah, and just go with it. And yeah, we're still learning. We're still learning. Just, we just do and hope for the best. But I mean, there has to be good, proper planning to it that you don't, you don't really, you don't so set up. How, you don't, I don't. Yeah, I mean, how, so how do you manage your time when, when you're designing both? Because there th th gets to a point where one of them has to take a back seat, right? Um, because yeah. I, I, find, I find it really difficult to, you know, if, w w once, once tech starts, my instinct is to take notes about lighting, forgetting that I'm also supposed to be taking notes about things that need to change on the set. So how, how, how do you sort of manage that process? So, um, so when I do this, the set design, it would, it would then, it would, the, I think the first half of, of, of the rehearsal process and I suppose before you even get to rehearsal, the set should be, should be done and, and the design is there so so that's i'd give all of my time to to the set and and just go by the time we get to to sort of the third week of rehearsal that's when i start going then how do we do how do we like this um yeah, but I mean, it's it's also going as well, and just going, uh, find somebody who 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 I'd be like, look out for me. This this, this is during tech week, you know. Like, okay, cool. There's 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 a set. I need to focus on lighting and 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 yeah, because the set is done already. So so how do we how do we then? You know, find uh, it, it, it's not it's not so easy, but I mean it's it's doable. You know, it's doable, but it's to also have to find uh, eyes as well to to go. This is what the set is doing. 
you know, just to go, oh, okay, please take notes for the set. And yeah, I can still do both, but what, in, the, in that process of creation, it's, it, you, oh, it, it's, it's not so easy to go to, to, to be at, at, on, to look out for both. So it, it, it helps to have an extra set of eyes to go, please look out for me for that. And but once once it's all done and you go into 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 the previews, then you start, you know, then you, you then you're able to take a back seat and go, this is what the set is doing, this is what the lighting is doing. You can you can do your own sort of your notes and and, and just sort of try and, 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 and piss it all together. But um but when and while you're still busy creating that the, the sort of trying to to light the show it's not so easy to to look at the set as well but um but i mean you do you do it long enough yet you're able to 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 yeah to, to sort of find yourself in there and just and and, and maneuver in the space but it's yeah it's, it's not easy <laughs> it's a skill it's a skill yeah it um, that's, that needs <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you also spent time as a stage manager. Um, yes, absolutely. How do, 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 do you find that's been helpful to you in your career as a as a lighting designer, having having been on the other side? Absolutely. It that that I mean, there's no sure. That's that's. I, I suppose that's where I find my, my most of my base is, 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 you know, most of the foundation is that, is being a stage manager. It's like, it's, um, I, I, I just wonder what, where I would be if, as a lighting designer, if I wasn't the stage manager set. And so that being a stage manager, actually, that, it's, it teaches you what theater is. How do you how do you look after a show? How do you how do you from rehearsal from you know the communication liaison with different departments of of the production and you know it's, yeah but uh, that that helps me quite a lot to understand what 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 the stage manager's duties are and and hence and hence then uh, as a lighting designer I'm able to make life easier for the stage manager. Oh, 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 in 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 that sense, where where you where I'm designing, I'm able to go. How how would a stage manage and and try to 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 how how would they understand this whole entire thing? What does it mean? You know, in terms of calling the show as well. What where? Just try and meet them somewhere where where it's not so hard. You know, because I mean, as a stage manager, sometimes you go, yeah, but where does this, where does this fit in? Where does you know, yeah, and and, and you know, and just, but yeah, uh, for for the fact that I've been there, and I know sometimes it's it's just making less really really simple for a lesson just to go, oh cool, we we need this, you need this, and and also when. When touring as well, you know, in touring with the production, you just go. There's a stage manager, there's the, the design team, blah blah blah, all of those things, and you go, okay, cool, what what you know, and and just try and make, it, if 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 then the 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 one member of the of the creative team who's not traveling with the show, how how do you you know, then that that helps a lot. That the experience of being a stage manager helps quite quite a lot. Yeah, and ah, oh, it's that's that's amazing. I've, I've, it's one of my favorite things to do. I, I I'm just unfortunate that no one wants to hire me as a stage manager anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna flip back to lighting um for a second. Do you have any favorite colors? If I if I come and see a Mandla show, am I going to be able to go? Oh, there's your favorite color. I'm sure you would. 
Yeah, I think um, variations of blue, but I, I think in the past, in the past five, six years, I haven't done a show without a Lee 200. Okay. Yeah. Well, with some other colors of, of, of course, but I mean, I think a Lee, Lee 200. Um, a, a tungsten no color open white. La, okay. Yeah. So yeah, and and sure, that's the whole entire. <laughs> that's the whole entire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, uh, ah. So yeah, okay, so I'm, let me. I'll, I'll, I'll follow it up with with another question, and then I'll, I'll I'll veer off in a slightly different direction. Um, when you're planning your shows, how do you go about choosing color? Sure. I mean, you know, obviously there's there's a fair amount of responding to the set and to the costumes and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But assuming assuming that. You know, it, as light designers, yeah. we're always going to do that, right? It's very rare that we're going to choose a color that makes something look terrible, unless it's for a very specific reason. So, aside from that, what's what's your sort of thought process? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, um, um, I I I try not to play around with saturated colors much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it's, it's from time to time, yes, of course. But I mean, it, uh, there has to be a theme, a, a, a composition of of what 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 the show, or what how you want to light the show. So, in 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 that composition, then inform informs the color of the 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 color palette of of, of which I would, I would I would sort of try and use. So it's is to have variations of 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 cold cold colors and variations of of warm colors, um, and then you'd have your sort of I know those LEDs which are not not really my favorite thing to use, but, <laughs> but I mean they we'll, we'll we'll come back to that in a second. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean that the, the, the your LEDs it can give you color, full on color, you know. But um, I think, and uh, mostly what what informs my color choices is is is, is the composition. What 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 you, you I choose a I choose a theme and just and and pray not to veer off the theme while lighting the show because then one one state has to link to the next to the next to the next to the next so it, it sort of it it there has to be a certain texture about the show that the, the, you know that's 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 what informs my color choices pretty much is just not to go from from one end of the spectrum to to the other end of the spectrum abruptly, you know, and to just go, yes, let's choose something sort of similar to that, something sort of similar to that, and just variations of that that's gonna give you if you if you if I use a dark blue on this side, a lighter blue on this side, you know, if I use a, a sort of a warm, a hard warm color then they use like a, a slightly tint you know, you, you know that kind of thing just to give a sort of variations of 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 the same thing but yeah um it's yeah it's another subject that <laughs> no, it is look color we, we we could talk color all night without a doubt um so how do you deal with because uh, yeah, it, it's something we all face, but I think it's it's particularly prevalent in South African theatre. How 
how do you deal with lighting different skin tones on stage? Because it's it, it's a challenge, right? Um, you know, you, different casts, different companies. It's always <laughs> interesting. How how do you deal with that? Sure. Oh, it's a, it's a very tough it's a very tough thing to do it because I mean you'd light um light a white person next to a black person it's it's shoo um there's oh, it's a it's a very it's yeah it's a very tough thing to negotiate but um I've I've, I've found that in, I'd, I've 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 sort of negotiated that quite quite easier you know um and i've I've done it a, a, a number of times and i think i've not haven't felt really dismally that far it's just you know <laughs> i just sort of sort of just get there you know um yeah I, I, and unless if if unless if you if if there's there's two different skin tones in one scene and the scene is sort of is sort of very elaborate and and quite dramatic as well so then then you find you find hard it, it becomes a real hard thing to sort of to sort of deal with and, and um, that also depends the the blocking is who moves around a lot what what you know is, is the person standing still so then you're able to go maybe I could add in a, a unit there and just go push up the intensity there, you know? So, yeah, but it's, it's not an easy thing to, 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 to sort of get, but once, 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 once you do get it, it's, you know, but I, I think I'd like to think that I've, I've, I've done it successfully quite a, quite a number of times and, and yeah, and just and to be able to split the difference of of going not too bright, not too dark, just so then the both skin tones go cool. Then let let enough, not too bright, not too dark on the other side, you know. So it's it's just it's just there. Yeah, and then that takes a little bit of a while, a little bit of time when you go because then you'd need to you'd need to go just stand there for a little bit longer so I can just be able to balance this yeah but it's um and I think it will it needs to be it needs one to be assertive as well in that sense because I mean some people do not understand that 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 you do yeah it's <laughs> no, fair enough it's, it's it is it's 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 a challenging thing to do um and, and like you say it's you you just you just spend your days balancing intensity levels and th so do you find it in, in cues where you have a huge variety of skin tones that a it takes you longer to do and b you find you have more cues within your show because you're sort of adjusting things or do you tend to find or do you do you find a balance that then sits for the scene um i uh not not through lack of laziness but it, i think it's it's to find <laughs> to find just one complete balance so that means if you're playing around with color it's to find the the right color of to 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 sort of to sort of um illuminate all across the board your skin tones just so then they sort of pop up you know um um well you know i'm going uh, to put you on the quest on the spot now and ask you what that color is right <laughs> are you gonna ask me what the color it's a secret no it's right now I'm, I'm willing to i'm willing to dive out <laughs> if, it, yeah, if it's a trade I mean, secret that's fine I'll, i will respect that no, 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 it's no trade secret. I was, I was, I was actually saying what color it is. And it's, yeah, but I mean, there is, it's, yeah. But I think across the board, you just, you just try and find 
and find that color and just go, this is the color that balances everything else. Um, you could say around it intensity, variations of intensity and just go, cool, that, that you know, yeah, but I mean, I mean, to add on cues because of you trying to deal with color, to me, does it, it never, it doesn't make sense. It has, it does, I don't think it's, I, I just find it, I just find it not sort of, not the right way to do it. I think you, you do it by literally correcting from the beginning, not trying and, and just, and just try and, and, and just find in your, and just think, then you add Q, lots of Q stacks just to counter a, a problem that it's, it's sort of like you, you think, um, uh, uh, because we, we missed the focusing, because you did not focus your lights correctly, then you keep adding units onto, onto, onto the problem, you know? It's, <laughs> It's, yeah, that's a good analogy. Think, yep, fair enough. Yeah. So I think yeah, if you account for the problem from the beginning, then then it it sort of works out better for it. Good. So I'm just uh, pulling up some images. So uh, are, you, are you seeing oh. my screen number? <laughs> yes, I see. I see it. So tell us, tell us what's going on here. You're obviously, it obviously uh, is, it rings r rings a bell. So uh, what's what, yeah. what was this? What was the show? Uh, the show the show is called uh, We Chant. It's yes, We Chant. Um, sort of created and directed by Nkantla Masamu. Uh, this was at the Records Museum and. In, in Newtown. Uh, yes. The and what's, yeah. what, what, what are the sources that, that the guys are holding? So these are dishes inside. You know the enamel dishes of different colors? Sort of you get your beige, your green, your enamel dishes. Uh, yeah. And inside the dish, there's a, there's a torch. As one of those flat torches, LED. Okay. Yeah, because it, yeah, it, it looks like a really, really powerful light source, but they they yeah. probably weren't too. But they were not that bright. If there's those, those little like push push to click things, those things. Yes, those things. Okay. But I mean, it also it also the environment at which, at which I think that's that's the the thing that makes it look so powerful is just, it is. The, the color temperature compared to what's surrounding us. Mm. And it was also at night in the dark. So yeah, and, and they hold them like this close to their faces. Sure, this was, ah, this is, this is beautiful. I mean, <laughs> oh, it takes me back. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what show is this? This is Rhinoceros, uh, done by the Market Theatre Lab Company. Okay. I think was yeah, uh, yeah. As, um, I don't know if you know Rhinoceros. Uh, it's um, sure. It's a it's a it's a story about um the whole community gets uh get rhinoceros disease so where everybody changes into into a rhinoceros <laughs> kind of that uh, yeah so it's yeah it's that kind of story and then i think yeah that's that's rhinoceros to remember quite quite well and are here. those is that are those just park hands with filters or is that led in the background doing the doing the it's sort park, of beams park hands, park hands with 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 filters, just okay. I had to literally sit and choose colors. And <laughs> Good, old school, like really old school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good, that's what we like. Here we go. Images are working now. Now this image oh. I chose just because I just love the texture and the shadow and the gobo and the color. 
I think it's just fantastic. Yeah. Ah, thank you, man. Uh, this is Desert. This is Desert, um, written by Lindy Machikiza. Um, I think it's about a uh, life story between her and the dad. Um, this is it is in the desert. So she's traveling and she meets this woman in the desert. That's 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 what this image is. So yeah, and there's a lot of of sort of global old school global breakup global here. Um, but you know me, I love then, a good global. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's that's yeah, and and I think um, there's a lot of shadow work as well, that uh, which took me a while to get right, but uh, eventually when I got it, it was just just the thing. So yeah. And so what what kind of sources and things were you using to to get the shadows? Um, Fennel is using Fennel. Yes, I was using a Fresnel to get to get the shadows, and also the profile uh, source force, the ETC source force. Um, Good plug, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I think it was was fifty degrees to get the uh, the the space. It was at the center for the less good idea. So it's it's a space that's been converted to a performance kind of thing. So to get to get sort of the enough spread for that global, I just needed sort of a, a a bigger lens to to sort of fill that in. But yeah, it's yes, it's yeah. I think um, final. Profiles. I find it. I find. I find that you know, give you a nice sort of shadow kind of thing, but it's it's also how 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 distorted can you, you can sort of see how sort of it's not really distorted, but it has it has a lot of layers onto it. So yeah, but I did. I think. Sure. It, yeah, it took me a while to sort of get that sort of thing going. Those kind of looks I find are always the hardest to do because because they're so precise. You know, they're, they're those fleeting moments yeah. in time, but actually they're the ones you spend longest creating because you've got to get everything to line up just perfectly. Yeah, it did took a while. <laughs> Ah, this. So this looks like you're lighting two sides in, in traverse, yeah? Uh, uh, yeah. Or, or audience on two sides, at least. Audience on two sides, yeah. Um, what, what venue is this? This is, this is the, um, the Menem Menem, which oh, really? used to be okay. the lager at the, at the market. So, right. yeah. Okay. Um, and... Talk to me about the the challenges of lighting traverse where you've got audience on both sides. Sure, I mean you, it's you you it it becomes sort of easier once once you've done a good focus and because whatever that you do on on this side you have to do on the other side because I, I I think for for a drama. And it, 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 it's easier to do that and just go, but yeah, and just, um, and, and there's, there's a bit of a warm variation of colors and a, a cold variation of colors where, where it's not, in, in, it's even in, in your, in the, in the, in the, in the look, in the looks that you, you sort of program is like, um, it, it's not always the cold, that comes in cold and on both sides, you know? And so it's maybe sort of very cold and, and warm from the other side. And it's almost like you're lighting for a four side thing, even though it's two sides, because you, you still need to get some bit of nice back color 
like nice back that sort of back lighting as well in the and yeah um this uh, this wasn't so so hard to do is um uh sort of uh, that thanks thanks to Nadia Cohen for the beautiful set with the simple set which just it just made made everything a little bit easier. I love Nadia's work. Uh, this is the image I was struggling to open earlier. Um, and again, yeah. I love this. And I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that's Lee 202, uh, 200 in the background. Yeah. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> yeah, that is. You are so right. And I think, um, so this, it's literally from the floor. Because most of the units were sitting on the floor, it was like um, uh, Fresnel six fifties on the floor and onto dustbins to sort of to sort of get these moments. Um, so, so just to interrupt you for a second. So, for our for our um, British uh, audience. Uh, we, uh, in England, you call them H stands. Um, in, in South Africa, we call them duck stands because it looks like, you know, you're sort of putting little feet on the light and oh, sort of making yeah. it look like, like a light. duck. We, we, I used to call them duck stands when I first arrived here. People thought I was mad. Um, so for anyone listening who doesn't know what a duck stand is, um, it's an H stand. Sorry, Mandla, carry on. Cool, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. It's an H stand, right? right. <laughs> okay. yeah. Duck stand is good. <laughs> Yeah, so it's yeah, it's 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 that, and there was um, a lot of warm as well, so a lot of contrasting in warm and cold. So yeah, and as as you have guessed right, that's a two hundred at the back, right? it's, <laughs> oh, and that's nice. um, I think, yeah, I think I think in the front was mostly open white, because I mean it's it's um. The, the the skin tones they're not so different which is not not yeah but i mean it's, it's sort of trying to get as much light and to and to just get that amber sort of kind of feel and just because then it picks up the skin a little bit more and it just yeah uh, ah this was yeah one of one of the favorite things that I could have done. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that picture too. Um, so while we're talking about um, the differences in sort of theatre terms and, you know, duck stands versus H stands, one of my favourite words that I haven't heard in a long time as a lighting term is shongololo, because yeah. we certainly don't call them shongololos <laughs> here, right? <laughs> so uh, for anyone who's listening, um, a ground row lighting a psych in South Africa, we refer to as a shongololo. And we yeah. do that. Uh, it's a Zulu word. I'm correct. It's it's the Zulu word for a centipede, right? Yeah. So it's the Zulu word for centipede because our ground rows are normally all mounted on on wheeled tracks, mm -hmm. so yeah. that you can sort of wheel yeah. them in and out as you need to. Them, uh, when yeah. they move on stage, they they move like like centipedes. Like so so yeah. we all call them shongololos. So for anyone who's touring to to South Africa at any point and you need a ground row on your psych, ask for a shongololo. There we go. <laughs> we are full of full of useful information in our life bad sessions. <laughs> That's so <laughs> That's um, a lot. No, there is. Yeah. There's so much. There's so much. Um, so the one last thing I want to touch on, we haven't really touched on it yet. Um, yeah. You have your own clothing range specifically designed mm -hmm. for theatre technicians. Yes. That's a very exciting thing that, that excites me a little bit. So, yeah, it's um, so it's uh, it's sort of like an overall. I don't know if you a wet suit kind of thing, um, with uh, lots of pockets and stuff. Um, it's specifically designed for for theater workers. That's why, you know, just for for people with red lights riggers to go up the ladder with all your tools and and it's yeah it's um it's been in development phase for for a while and i've just thought let's 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 start producing prototypes out of you know so yeah and it's, it's it will forever be in development because it's it is a changing world 
you know? Absolutely. And, and I, so I'd like to also keep it fresh. And that, so it's not only just for, for when people are working, it's also a thing that after work, you could just go, I want to go, go chill and have a pint. As in, what, how, how do you call it in London? Is that a pint? There we go, yeah. Yeah, close enough. You know, and yeah, and just go, yeah, and just go show at a part somewhere and, just, and you still don't feel the need that you want to sort of change your clothes and, you know, because it, sometimes it gets really, really dirty and, and, and yeah, you, you know, and, and it's sort of getting the right material as well, which I think we've found the right material and we'll be back producing uh quite soon quite soon because i mean i think um the the break the covid break was sort of gave us a, a, um time to go to go re-strategize and 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 how we want to move forward with this because i think uh, it could be a long spending thing it could be a thing that's just just there like how levers straws started you know, I'd want, I'd want it, I'd want it to be something of that sort. We're just, it's just it's there. I, you know? I hope, I hope that it turns into the new, the new Levi's for you. <laughs> I hope and pray. Yeah. Um, oh, that uh, kind of sort of wraps us up. It brings us, brings us to the end of our time, of our time slot. Um Thank you very much, Manda, for taking the time to chat to us. Uh, always a pleasure. Really good to see you again. Haven't seen you in so long. So um, um, I'm really glad to see you you doing so well and designing and working in theatre and, and doing such good work. So uh, congratulations wow. for all of that. And um, good luck with uh, all your shows moving forwards. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, man. And I mean... For people who do not know, I just want I just wanna yeah, I just wanna say, say this this little story here yeah, that uh, I mean um suppose suppose people do not know, but I mean so as Dick and Randall got me into into that lighting shows really and just go I, yeah, I mean you you were one person who was just was bothering the most. Like, what are you doing? What is this? What does this meant to do, you know? And and a, a thank you for thank you so much for 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 the time and just you know and just and just being able to go you can do it and and that sort of belief of going yes you can you know thank you thank you so much it means a lot and here I am now. Well, you are most welcome, and I'm really glad that. Um... You know that that we got the, to spend time together in in the early part of your career, and and hopefully we'll yeah. do it again sometime as soon as as soon as we're able to travel. Um, yeah, you know. Of course, I'm so looking forward to it, and yeah, I hope yeah, I hope I hope I I get to London at some point, and we can just do proper catch up. <laughs> that would be that would be very good. Mandla, thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Thanks for taking time to join us in Light Bites. Uh, thank you very much to everyone else who has joined us for the session. Um, just to let you know, again, our next session will be on the 4th of March. That's a Thursday. And uh, we'll be talking to cinematographer uh, Fabian Wagner, whose work you will have seen in some of the Marvel movies, some of the DC movies, uh, and in the TV series Game of Thrones. So we'll be chatting to Fabian uh, in March. Um, that will be a live session um, at the Playhouse uh, in London. So uh, do feel free to join us for that. Um, otherwise, thank you very much. Stay in touch. If you want to get in touch with anyone, uh, our email address is lightbites at etcconnect.com. And thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you uh, in season three, episode two, in the 4th of March. Thanks so much and have a good night.